and welcome everyone. My name is Maura Gamble and I'm calling in from the land of the Gubby Gubby, a very rainy and wet land of the Gubby Gubby <laughs> right now. Um, so I'm here speaking um, from the headquarters of the Permaculture Education Institute, which sounds very fancy, but in actual fact, where I am is in an eco village in uh, the Sunshine Coast hinterland of Australia. And I would really love to invite you to um, let us know where you're calling in from. Um, it's a it's wonderful just to kind of see where people are. Um, if you know the Indigenous uh, country, what I'd love to share with you today is a, a presentation that goes through a whole lot of the different aspects of what it is that we do here at the Permaculture Education Institute um, from our courses and programs and initiatives. Uh, you'll get a chance to see inside what happens in some of the courses. You'll see some of the work that students are doing, which always knocks my socks off. <laughs> and um, you'll also get a chance to see some of the community-based work that is uh, unfolding from this program as well, as, of course, an opportunity to ask any questions that you'd like to ask about what we do here and uh, how to get involved or anything that you've brought with you. So feel free to either um, drop those questions in the chat or um, have a have a um, wait till the end and we'll have a space too for you to, to ask your questions. So I'm going to leave that completely up to you. I hope you can hear me all right. It's just started to bucket down incredibly where I am. Um, my swales will be getting full and all of the little plants that were starting to look a little bit dry are uh, starting to bounce up, which is wonderful. All right, so um, I will just share my screen. So, all right, so um, this open day is something that we do every few months, um, just as a way to open our doors because we, we do run our programs as an online platform. Um, this is our way of swinging our doors wide open and inviting you in to, um, to come and see what happens. Uh, so what we'll do over the next little while is I'll show you through some of the different programs we've got from how to become a permaculture teacher, doing design work. Um, we have an incredible global learning community called Hive, and we've also got some new programs too, such as Share Permaculture, ways to create permaculture presence, and then some that we've been doing for a long time, which is our Grow Permaculture Incredible Edible Garden and our, our care work through the Ethos Foundation, <clears throat> excuse me, and also Perma Youth. And, um, and of course, the many free resources that we have got um, available from masterclasses to film clubs, podcasts, um, YouTube and blog. So that's kind of the things that we'll be exploring over the next little while. Uh, so I wanted to start with the Permaculture Educators Program. Um, and also, Stacey, perhaps, um, so uh, let me introduce Stacey. Stacey uh, is here. Um, she works with the Permaculture Education Institute too as our community manager and is always here um, on our live events, helping me to run these and helping to organise them too. So thank you to Stacey for being here. Um, what I wanted to ask you, maybe if you do see questions that are related as I'm going through, just feel free to, to interrupt me and, and we can we can answer as we're going. Sure. So the, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I just, yeah, no problem. Thank you, Ta. So the Permaculture Educators Program is a really unique program that I designed that weaves together two permaculture certificates. So we have the design permaculture design certificate, which most people are familiar with, woven together with the permaculture teaching certificate and also business modules. The purpose of this program is to support people to not only become really fabulous designers in their local area, but also to work out how to make that into um, a teaching livelihood. Uh, so I'm really dedicated to supporting people to find a way that this can be a livelihood. So as your life lifestyle, it can be a hobby, but if you'd like to take it further, um, that's really where I'd like to support you to go to, because I really do see that particularly with everything that's going on in the world right now, to find a way to create local resilience in our homes, in our communities, and even the possibility that this is something that we do for most of our days to support uh, positive things happening in the world. Uh, so we are a global community. We have students across the world on, on six continents. 
um, everywhere except for Antarctica. And so it's wonderfully diverse. It's super flexible. You can start anytime, um, work at your own pace. And even, you know, some people take a break and come back to it or, you know, stretch it out different times. Life happens and we know that. Uh, so we, we don't try and sort of make it too structured. Um, but there is a flow to the course that if you'd like to, you can follow. But if you need to stretch, um, that's totally fine. Everything keeps happening these days. And it's nice to know that you're not sort of stuck. Um, so uh, Stacey's helped to gather a few um, testimonials of of students during the time. So I'm going to pepper the presentation with these just to give you an insight of some of the things people are saying about the courses. Uh, so Caitlin has said, um, this course offers an enormous opportunity to access a wealth of knowledge gather over many years and allows one to move through the modules at your own pace, taking time to observe your site and revisit content as needed. So, so yes, you can sort of start and get the information needed, then go out into your place do your observations, start doing designs, and then come back again and think, oh, actually, I want to revisit that. So you can move backwards and forwards through the program, which I think it really helps to um, develop something uh, that's really cohesive. I want you to come out of this program with an amazing um, uh, design for your own place, whether it be your own place, a school, a community garden, or, you know, a friend's place. So as well as the online content, we have um, live sessions that happen regularly, like this on Zoom, um, interactive ones, tutorials and forums, networking sessions, and also really encourage you to get into doing a whole lot of um, at-home hands-on things, and, and particularly in the design side of things and practising being a teacher, because this is a design and education program. So overall, there's 44 modules. So when you get into the uh, into the into the course portal you'll see each module has its own little card so when you get ready to start that you can open that one up and then it takes you to all the content inside of that um, so once you're inside you'll see um, each module has a series of lessons and uh, they're laid out and they've got videos and they've got um, illustrations pictures references act suggested activities design tasks um, links to where you can get more resources and some people you know get to a point say like soils and say look I, I just spent seven weeks at soils because there was so much that I could kind of dive in and find my way and other times you might get to a module think oh I know a lot of this stuff I'm just going to skip and it might take you only an hour or two so um, it's really uh, flexible in that way I also include, particularly in the earlier parts of the course, a series of modules to help you to get to the point of going, okay, well, what is it that I'm really looking for to do? Um, what's going on in my site? What are the local Indigenous um, uh, cultures that I need to be looking at and learning from? Uh, what's going on in my broader bioregion? What's happening in my soil? And so there's a series of worksheets just to help guide you along that process. Um, there's a little video here that I'd like to share from one of our participants who's a musician, actually, and um, she wrote a little song about her experience here. So um, I'm just going to play that now. Hi, I'm Alison, and um, I've been a member of this course since 2019, and I, I might just be the world's slowest student, but that's okay. Um, the benefit of this course is that you can do it at your own pace. Um, it's also been good to take my time with it because uh, I've had to try and work out how to fit permaculture into my life as a classical cellist and work out how to make that all fit together in a way that makes me happy. Um, so this little song is inspired by Morag and the Permaculture Education Institute and I hope you like it. It was 2013, I went down to the library, I saw a lovely lady with wild curly hair, she talked about her life in Eagle Village near Mulaney, of growing food and earth and people now my backyard's full of cannon, sweet potato and banana. Catch and store, watch and see, use and value diversity. My backyard's full of cannon, sweet potato and banana. Connect with the land right here where we stand, one planet 
living's a really good plan. So I signed up to the course, learned how to read the landscape, then designed my kitchen garden, got my quails and bees. Share with the hive, make your dreams come alive now. This group of like minds, our community. All my backyards full of cannon, sweet potato and banana. Zones and flow, small and slow, integrate, not segregate. It's hard to be an activist, feels good to be a practice. Connect with the land right here where we stand. One planet living's a really good plan. So I really love her songs. Alison, as she said, is a professional cellist. And one of the things that, as she said, she's been working out to do is how to combine music and permaculture. And she's come up through the education process of this course to design a musical for children that she's going to take to schools which I think is so brilliant so the idea here within the course is to think okay how do you design something that makes sense for you and how do you design an education program that makes sense for the community and the skills that you bring into it it's not like there's a a cookie cutter recipe that we want you to all go out and do it's like how do you make it make sense and fit and also there's lots of different um, activities that we encourage people to do. For example, um, she'd also written a song describing what permaculture is um, using uh, her, her musical talents, which is, is just fabulous. So as well as um, the things that I've mentioned, there are also a series of live sessions. So we have design studios where people get to present their designs. We get to see what's going on. We get to get good feedback. We get to practice being design teachers. There's an education lab where we explore different ways that people can offer permaculture education. We can learn different skills in that. Um, we have tutorials to dive in deep. If you're getting stuck anywhere, uh, we have uh, an education tutor and a design tutor. And then there's also the master classes that happen every month, bringing in experts from around the world to come and add extra value into our course, as well as our film club. So our next film club coming up um, will be by the guy who wrote this book, Sustainable Food, Michael Mobs. And so he's going to be joining us for that, which will be a lot of fun. Um, so in the design studio, you'll get to see, uh, you know, how people do the stuff that we're suggesting you do. And you get to see how people do their plans and their wind roses and their sun arcs, and you get to ask them. So if you ever get stuck, you know, come along to these live sessions and, and find out what's going on. Um, and like I said, there's tutorials. So every fortnight, um, if you're getting stuck anywhere, come along to those. We have um, two, two different times. So whether you're in America's time or, or Europe time or Australia time, it doesn't matter. We've tried to make sure that everyone's covered. Um, and whatever you're getting stuck with, our tutor finds what that is and then creates a class um, that fits around that. Um, same with our education lab. So one of the people who's done um, an education um, designed an education program has been has actually written a book in Korean and so this is her way of choosing to be a permaculture educator being an illustrator and writing a beautiful a beautiful book for children and now she's got a position writing um, drawing up um, beautiful works in in the country's um, premier children's magazine um, so that permaculture education is going out through that every time so it can look like so many different things so she ran her lab in in actually what it takes to create a book so we got this wonderful step-by-step -step guide on how do you write a book phenomenal um, and then also uh, a program uh, of working with children so there's different things that come through all the time and people share their handouts their timetables so it's like such a great way to um you know, overcome any sort of ideas block that you have. You can cherry pick from all sorts of things. And uh, so as well as the design tutorials, we have this permaculture with children's club that's going on for, for some time now. And uh, we invite people who've been doing this uh, in different schools or different contexts 
Um, we bring in um, guests. We unpack a whole lot of different ways that that's possible. And this was a quote that just came through this morning. I highly recommend this course to any person considering a permaculture design certificate or teaching course. The knowledge gained helped me to transform my urban backyard into an edible oasis and rippled out into my work as a classroom teacher. And so Emma's been one of those who's been a, a dedicated member of our permaculture with children's group. Um, it's inspired me to embark on a new project of creating a, a rural permaculture property where I aim to provide a teaching space with accommodation in bell tents, ongoing employment opportunities, facilitation in women's circles, community connections, and much more. So it's fantastic just to see too, you know, the, the imagination unfolding and I can see lots of different conversations that have been had in, in um, un, you know, contributing to that. Uh, so as well as the, you can come along live to these sessions or if you can't make it, we always have them recorded and we have an archive. And so this gets updated every time there's a new session. So you can drop into our archive inside the course and find out everything that's been going on and, and um, go back and watch it. Um, also, uh, a retired lecturer um, wrote this about the course, leading from the foundations of permaculture theory and practice to passing on this knowledge through teaching, the combined course is both innovative and accessible. The online course is so well constructed. Uh, Morag's incredible depth of experience together with guest speakers and many video demonstrations, so clearly how things are done. So it's really about <clears throat> trying to get things happening in your place. It's very practical. This is one of the things I think that, some people often ask me, but how, how can you get practical in an online course? And it's because it's so much about going out and doing things in your place and in your community, coming back and getting your designs woven together with your education programs and, and really trying to um, uh, answer as many questions as we can from all different angles. So in order to complete the Permaculture Educators program there are six core projects and these projects are designed not just to make you do work as an assignment they're actually designed so that you can work through becoming a really proficient designer and also creating an education program that is something that you can take immediately out and start running where you are and in actual fact by the time you finish the course you will have completed an amazing design for your place and you will also have started teaching. And so, you know, that and then you're welcome to stay as long as you need to, to get that happening. It's not like, okay, the course is finished now, off you go, goodbye. It's like, we want you to be able to do this. We want to support you. And we want you to keep coming back as well. So, um, and that's why it's, it's due date free. You just keep working and working and finding your way through it. Now, Fleur, I think, is here at the moment in the in the group, and um, I was really delighted that you wrote this, Fleur. So your horse, your course, your horse, your course makes my heart sing, and it feels like I'm finally doing what I'm passionate about. The more I do, the more it connects me to understanding how everything works. And so this is a little clip from from Fleur. Hi, my name is Fleur Harvey. I started Mora Gamble's uh, course 15 weeks ago, Permaculture Teacher Design. And I absolutely love it. This is part of my garden behind me. This is my pumpkin patch, which I found out so many details about pumpkins. So if you do the course, you can learn more about it. There's just so much involved in the course. And I've been wanting to do it for so long and I've loved every minute of it. And so much detail, so many different things you can utilize about the course. There's tutors and it's just fantastic so just go ahead and do it it's just an amazing thing to do and thank you Fleur for being present at just about every single live event that's run and participating in we also have so many other groups like last night we were on a session to look at how we could um, do writing to support the refugee programs and, and Fleur was there and was volunteered so Fleur's never sitting on her hand. She's always got a hand up doing something. So that's fantastic, Fleur. Um, so I just want to just run through a, a, a bit of a picture gallery of some of the student work that um, happens in the course, just to give you an idea of, of what you're supported to create. Um, so the first project is actually from... Uh, 
Plum Village in France. It was a group of people who were working together on Thich Nhat Hanh's farm, the late Thich Nhat Hanh. And so they got together and worked this and they had a room full of all their working drawings. Um, and then this was the report that they sent through. So I'm just going to share it. So um, it's called Happy Farm. It's a hamlet in, in France that people live and stay there. And this farm is being designed to actually feed the whole community that stays there. So um, I'm just going to scan through the pictures. So they started with a mind map of all the different elements. So these are the things that we encourage people to do in the course. So mind mapping the elements and how that all fits together, um, starting to create a base plan. What is there at your site already? And that includes all the different services and facilities, making sure you've got your orientation and your contours um, then starting to map your sector plan. So where is the sun coming from, the wind, the water? Um, we go through all of these different steps. So this is sort of showing you how that's starting to lay out. Then we look at zones. So starting to think about well, where are the different zones of the, the things that we need to focus on that are close in, things that need less attention, things that are, you know, the wild spaces. And so that's the simple zone planning and then starting to get into flows and nodes, like how do you move through the site? How does how do you actually enter into these spaces? Um, you know, looking at water plans and design, so mapping all of that element out. Um, also, you know, always making sure you have all these sort of elements. My background is landscape architecture, so I'm always really trying to find ways to support people in, in designing these kinds of plans that they can do for other people. So you could actually come out of this course and be a permaculture um, professional permaculture designer as well and then they put it together as a as a beautiful piece of artwork actually their design and then started going into detail of what's happening in each space um, and then looked in more detail what's the water plan for this site uh, and then just some really simple views of what it felt like to enter into this garden and how you know you might move through and so just different artistic representations of that um, which I thought was really lovely and then little details of the plan so like zooming in even further into that of what happens in that really rich um, fabric of their design uh, so that was a collective project um, and this is some of the people involved in it and some photos from there uh, and then the woman who wrote this book um, Yul from Korea um, has presented a, a beautiful artistic representation too of, of her design. This is her kitchen garden design. This is the second project in her, in her um, series. Some people choose to do it on computers and do this annotated plans like this and look at what elements they want to include. So this is sort of still base planning stage um, others do it hand drawing, you know, just get a scrapbook and start mapping things out. But as you can see, too, they're doing this side view here. So it really gives a sense of what's going on. Lots of little um, keys going to the legend going on. So you know what's happening. Um, and then other people uh, choose to do as well hand drawing with, uh, with pencil and then doing overlay mapping. So building up pictures. Um, so we talk about all these different methodologies. Again, there's a hand drawing one. This one here is um, using more watercolor. Uh, pens and then we start with the design really broadly so once you've got your base plan like what are the general areas that are there what are the the areas and the flows and the connections so before you start to get into any detail we need to go use the permaculture principle of patterns to details and so this is another sector analysis and a and a, and a bubble diagram we call them here's some more bubble di diagrams that really you get to feel into what's how things all fit together before you then go into that richness. And this is a really fun spot where you can just play in that design. And we also do some little sections too of, of how to how to do drawings. If you haven't done drawing before, then there's little segments of the course and also tutorials to, to unlock that. Some people say they never drawn since they were like in, in primary school and they had so much fun doing this part. Um, some people like to do it on computer and it's really up to you. We, we don't sort of say you have to do it one way or the other. And then so you can see, you know, people, this annotated design methodology is a really lovely way to, <clears throat> excuse me, start to 
you know, wherever you are, I really like to use pen and paper just because it means wherever you are, you can just whip out, you know, what you've got and start to draw for people. Uh, and again, here's another design plan that's been done up. So it was, um, it's really quite a small yard and just the house and, and the backyard garden, but everything's on the one on the one plan there. And this is a design that was done on the computer and you can see they've overlaid the contours and, and um, created their legend here and then extra detail of some of their parts of their plans. This was a, as a, an overview plan for people in, um, in a community garden. And so I found it really interesting the way they used the snake, which was a path, as a way of connecting with the Indigenous uh, community that's there. And then from that, used uh, used that to hang together all the different areas. And it wove, so, um, yeah, the Friday night food truck and the, the kids' space and the workshop and the, the open space for, you know, really embracing people in the, in the belly of this all. So a lot of thought had gone into that. Um, and again, um, just simple drawings or detailed sort of more visual descriptions of what's happening. And then um, to architectural drawing. So sometimes there's people on this course who have a lot of drawing experience and other people who have had none. And what we look for is really the thinking behind how you embody and how you include permaculture principles and support you to do that. So this was actually done by a man called Adam, Adam Hill, who has an architectural practice, which is now um, based firmly around permaculture. And he's one of his uh, things that he's doing um, as a result of this course is now teaching at the university um, a combination of permaculture and architecture. And again, more designs. Um, hand-drawn designs. This one's from the Philippines. Um, this one here is from Australia. Uh, a lot of detailed thought goes into these. So you can see that there's the possibility for really shaping your place. Um, excuse me, I'm just going to have a little bit of a, a sip of water. Um, one of the educational designs that someone did recently was this permaculture journal um, and has actually deciding to sell this. So you can access this now um, online. It's a way of encouraging people to go through this process of noticing, observing, designing um, and practicing, getting into the practice of being a, a good observer. Other people like Joanne Karuna from Philippines um, does artistic representations of her journaling and, and journals on Instagram. And we all learn from each other through that way by sharing what it is that we're doing, whether it be the journaling, whether it be our designs, whether it be our mood boards. Another thing I encourage people to do is to create a basic ideas board when they're getting started. What are all the elements you want to include? So some people use um, Pinterest to do that. Other people have a pin board at home. Um, some people have a scrapbook. Um, so Julie uh, is one of the teachers who's been in this program for a while. And she said, my journey thus far has been mind boggling to say the least. I cannot emphasize enough the doors that these courses open for you and the opportunities that are presented so that you can live a regenerative and sustainable lifestyle. There's also an opportunity to create an economic future for yourself too. And um, that's great because I really, like I said at the start, I really think that it's so important that we find a way to, to make this a livelihood and be able to contribute in that way. A big thing that I wrap around everything now, all the courses, is this program called Hive, and it's our learning community. So anyone who comes into any of our programs automatically gets access into this space. Um, and what this is, is uh, a, basically is where you could find out all of the different events that we've got going on. It's our own kind of a Facebook chat, but without the Facebook world. Uh, where we can share videos and resources and links. We have also special rooms. So depending on what course you're in, you can kind of knock on the door of that and enter into this room where a whole other world of information and sharing goes on. And we also have a series of topics where you can um, be sharing resources or films, um, podcasts, um, a, a range of different things like that. So the Hive is, is a growing and full space uh, for sharing and uh, it's we're actually 
every day there's something new that's happening in there and it's growing. But one of the things that I think is just fantastic is in there you can easily see what event's coming up and just with a one click be able to go to that event and find recordings right in there too. So we have lots of different sort of spaces where we have our live Zoom discussions. Um, and this is a group, uh, sorry, this is a, a woman who's from a homeschooling group in northern New South Wales. Um, and she said, what a brilliant PDC and educators course, life affirming, positive, and encouraging, all the things we need right now. So her and her son, who's about 12, are doing this course together. And in actual fact, there's a number of people who are doing this course together with their children. And so young people are getting certified as permaculture designers and educators. And I think this is a brilliant space for that to happen. Uh, we, I mentioned earlier that we have film clubs that happen. So once a month we invite, um, usually we invite a speaker to come in as well as screening either new release films that are related to permaculture or a collection on a particular theme. Uh, last month was Urban Agriculture Month, so we shared some fantastic Happen films, films um, that were all related to um, urban agriculture. And uh, during June, which was World Localization Month, uh, we featured Helena Norberg Hodges' film from Local Futures. And so that's a really great space to come in and, and explore and share. Every month too, on the last Monday of every month, we have a, a masterclass. And so these are either me sharing a particular topic or we bring in a speaker or a, pan or a panel to talk about issues. So we had a panel uh, to release um, Rosemary Morrow's latest book, The Earth Restorer's Guide to Permaculture, which you can see on the screen. Um, sometimes people say, I'd like to find out more about a particular topic, so I'll do a deep dive on that. Um, also related to the Urban Agriculture Month, just recently we hosted David Holmgren um, talking about retro suburbia and how that um, related to that particular theme. So um, they're always lots of fun to dive into. So some of the other things that we've got going on, um, we have uh, an eight-week teach permaculture course that I'm in the midst of at the moment. Uh, so for a couple of uh, days a week, we have sessions where people come together and are doing a sort of a, a fast-track permaculture teachers course. So if you've already done a PDC, a permaculture design certificate, you can drop into that. Um, Laura, um, who's from Zanzibar, um, Germany and Zanzibar, actually, she said, I'm so happy I signed up for this course. Already in the first week, got me super inspired and motivated to continue on my journey of teaching permaculture. The course is really well structured and the facilitators are great. And the access to additional course notes and a variety of extra resources give the students lots to follow up on. So um, we really do try and give all the background that you need also within Hive, we now have a new program called Share Permaculture. And the idea of this is to create something that is uh, a support for you to develop up your permaculture presence. So, okay, you might be a good designer, you might be a good teacher, but how are you going to make a living and get what you're doing out into the world? How do you create a presence for yourself and for the permaculture work? Or it could be your permaculture project, your permaculture community. Um, out into the world. So we started off with um, public relations, so looking at how to get your stories out into the media. Um, we're going to focus on how to create podcasts and YouTube channels and all the different things that you need to actually be able to get your voice out into the world. So that's Share Permaculture. That's a new program. Um, another one that started a couple of years ago is called Morag Unplugged. And basically it's just me lifting the hood on what's inside how to run a permaculture business, how to design and run a program that is ethical and sustainable and brings in enough income to support you and your family, as well as being able to give back into the community. Um, so that's a small group mentoring program that will start again um, early next year. We have um, also a wonderful little course, which is this sign that's behind me over here, uh, it's called the Incredible Edible Garden, and it includes a number of different modules that go do a deep dive into what are the basic things you need to know to get a vibrant permaculture garden happening. And so that's six main module with um, three extra modules, and it's a self-paced course. You can start anytime, and there's no expiry. And we do actually have a Facebook group that's active there to explore the the topics um, if people need need to ask a question or if they'd like to share what they're doing 
um, that's a great spot. Um, in March 2023, we will be finally getting our Permaculture Education Summit happening, which I'm super excited about. Like, who are all the people in the world who are focusing in on doing permaculture education and getting them together? So if you are interested in, in permaculture education, um, this will be a place to come along and meet people in this space, find out how you can um, take it in other places. And maybe even if you're already doing it and you'd like to um, present on it. Uh, every uh, May is International Permaculture Day, so we host an event around this. This is a time when we bring together, you know, leading voices from different aspects of permaculture to come along. Um, and then I really look for all different opportunities to take permaculture into the world of talking about um, different kinds of regenerative education, regenerative design. And um, so I'm always on the lookout for these sorts of opportunities and invite anyone who's part of our programs to come along to these too. So you'll always hear in the hive about really interesting conferences, events, films, programs that are going on. So whatever I discover, I drop into the hive so that you all can find out about it too. And then the permaculture care program. So this is essentially the program that, um, is run in conjunction with our registered charity called the Ethos Foundation. So a lot of the programs I run, all the film clubs, masterclasses, um, all of those sorts of programs, they're free, but we invite people to donate. And every single cent of the donation goes to the Ethos Foundation to support um, programs there. Also, there's a number of people, many of them who are here in this group too, who, who offer a monthly stipend or, or donation that helps to support people to run programs um, around the world. Uh, so this is um, this is Lillian. Lillian's just in the midst of running a permaculture design course for about 50 women in her village. Um, hopefully, if I get the chance, I'll show you the little video that she sent. Um, she's also was able to get seeds for hundreds of women farmers who had been in drought and were um, really struggling. So this is the second permaculture design course that she's running right now at this moment. I think I saw Lillian come in. So hello, Lillian, if you're here. Um, hi, hi. Oh, you are. Great. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. I hope your course is going well today. Yes. We also run... Um, it was support a, a lot of programs across East Africa in Uganda, in Tanzania, as well as, as Kenya. So um, this is around supporting education, um, setting up demonstration programs, livelihood programs, and, and trying to support free access to permaculture education. And so far, thousands of people have had the opportunity to be um, taught by local teachers. And so our role here at the Permaculture Education Institute is to support those teachers by offering access free access to all of our education programs and creating a community of support around them so they can deliver. Rather than sending people over to deliver, um, it's supporting local people to deliver in local languages in with the local cultural understanding, which makes so much more sense. Uh, so there's a lot of programs that happen from um, programs in schools, programs um, doing regenerative um, tree planting of food forests in the community, um, teaching women farmers, uh, running women's groups. Um, this was this is Roland. This is a picture from yesterday. Uh, she came into our Teach Permaculture program. Um, her house had fallen down because of the floods, um, but she was still there, and uh, she had her little sister on her on her lap, and she was presenting her permaculture micro teaching program um, in in a borrowed room with a child on her lap, and she still went on, and I. I have so much admiration for her. She's This is Roland here and she's running the Permaculture Art Program, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But there's lots of people involved in all of the programs. So this is Ben Ricky, who's basically leads so much of the Perma Youth programs and we're able to get some funding to support him to connect all of the different Perma Youth networks again early next year for a permaculture kind of a teach-in. Um, this is Jennifer who runs um, the Days for Girls program and permaculture nutrition and education programs at schools. And uh, this is in another refugee camp with um, uh, Anvier who runs programs for kids to get vegetable gardens going on. 
Uh, this is Ben Ricky with his mushroom farm. So we've been able to sponsor um, through the collaboration with the Buckminster Fuller Institute and Regenerosity and Lush to be able to get mushroom houses popping up um, in the camps and creating highly nutritious nutritious um, mushroom crops which um, create also um, compost materials, um, dried product which is, has a high value but also really great nutrition for, for families and, um, you know, breastfeeding mothers. This is Danny who is passionate about getting nurseries happening and regenerating. He's from, a, he's from the refugee camps in um, Tanzania. And uh, this is uh, Jennifer again. Uh, teaching women, uh, helping to teach perma youth, and also making up and teaching people how to make washable sanitary pad kits. So we often support her too to go out to the schools and offer free kits to every girl in the schools that she's invited to. Uh, so there's a couple hundred each time. And, uh, and while she's there, she teaches them about their body, their rights, and she teaches them also about nutrition and helps to get permaculture gardens started. And then in up in the camps too, this these um, handmade ones are starting to be made, um, and uh, people are sharing their knowledge about how to do this. Uh, there they are, stitching and making them all. Now this is the permaculture art project. So um, Roland, who's the woman I mentioned before, who was sitting in the fallen down house, um, she sent me this picture here of um, it could be himself or maybe another boy. And it blew me away. Um, Joshua's 12. And these are also his pictures as well. And we so we we suggested, well, maybe there's a way that if we send photographs to them, they might be able to do some work. We could commission them to do this artwork. And that's a way of creating an income, doing something that they love. So they're Perma Youth members um, who are passionate about art. So this was one of the ones that's already been done from a photograph. This is one of Stacey's pets, I think. Um, she tested that. And so these are all teenagers and this is the work that they're doing. It's phenomenal. Um, just from a little photograph. Amazing. I just, it gives me goosebumps looking at this. And then now we've opened up the opportunity for people to send in pictures. So it's it's $50 for a, for a, a commissioned artwork and they paint them. They're beautiful, massive, great, big things. And then they digitise that and send it to you so you can print it out. We can't post things between refugee camps and here. That just doesn't work. But um, this way they can get an income. And, and so we're doing this as a Christmas thing. If you were really looking for an amazing permaculture gift that gives in so many different ways, um, this is uh, something that you might think. I'll give you the link about it afterwards. Um, also, a lot of the work that's being done in the camps is now being documented by people like Ben Ricky in this in his YouTube channel, and every all the different things that he's making and the songs that they're doing with the young people is collected here. Uh, we have a, a we collaborate with um, groups of people who are creating uh, permaculture music in the camps. So there's a whole series of the camps are now developing up studios to create permaculture music. So they've told me early on, they said, Morag, it's this is good, but it makes much more sense if we can sing it and it would be so much more fun and it would go further. So we've been supporting them to actually write and record songs um, to share out permaculture messages. So this is Roland um, just sharing a little bit about what she does and what it means to her. So this is Roland from Nakavali Refugee Settlement in Uganda. Hi, my name is Roland. I have been a permaculture teacher at the Permaculture Education Institute since uh, January 2021. Um, since I started the course, I've been teaching permaculture in different refugee camps and host communities here in Uganda. I've got an experience from there, and I'm really thankful to the Ethos Foundation for having sponsored me into all this. Um, personally, um, this course has been so important to me because I've got the opportunity to learn other different courses that are related to permaculture and to nature care. And I've been able to meet different people and discuss with them and be able to learn from their experiences. Um, to my community, this permaculture course has helped a lot because I've been able to host a training of 30 people, including youth and adults. 
and it was really successful and now they are all working and finding ways of transforming the community into a better one. Living in a refugee camp has never been so easy as you can think about it. Yeah, it's hard and it's even more hard when the refugee camp is in Africa <laughs> and you are receiving three dollars for the whole month for food and everything. And uh, we thank the Ethos Foundation for having helped us into so many ways in hosting trainings for adults and even for children. Like now we are having a farm and we are soon starting to um, transform it and we hope that in the future we are going to be hosting more trainings in it. To the new students who would like to join the Pamakache Education Institute, what I can say is you are going to be surprised. I really welcome you because what I thought I came to learn here is not really what I learned. I learned too much more. I was surprised and surprised from all the learnings that I have gotten here. I thought I came to learn just permaculture, agriculture and nature care, but what I found was much more than that. And I really hope you also enjoy the course like I did and you also change your communities. Thank you. So Roland continues to be part of programs and you get to meet her and, you know, get to meet and learn with Lillian here, who's part of um, our program too. And I love this part of our community, that it is so interesting and so diverse and you get so many perspectives on how it is that permaculture can be applied. Um, we also hosted this year the Youth in Permaculture Prize and I was um through the Ethos Foundation, I had independent judges. I promise I had independent judges, but two of the members of um, the Permaculture Education Institute were actually um, awarded this year the main prizes, um, both of them under 20. Um, so I was super excited by that. And our initiative, the Perma Youth, um, which came out of the youth involved in Permaculture Education Institute, have now been um, awarded a number of different prizes, the Lush Spring Prize, the Hilda Jackson Award, the Permaculture Magazine Prize. Um, we, we host uh, Perma Youth around the world to do lots of different things. We've had a series of events and we host people like Costa Georgiadis and Hannah Maloney in Australia. If, if you're here, you'll know who they, they are. We've also had international guests as well from, um, from the United States and from uh, all, um, UK. We also run something called the Ethos Youth Fellowship. And this is a program that I host every Sunday night with young people. It's kind of like a university without walls. And I invite leading ecological thinkers to come and meet with young people to explore what it means to live uh, a sustainable way of life, how, how to do systems thinking, um, how to think about decolonizing our future. So this is, um, you know, this is Fritjof Capra, a leading systems thinker in the world who's meeting up with young people who are part of our program. I'm so blown away by the opportunity that this provides. Um, it's a bit of a secret, but I think we've just been shortlisted by the Lush Spring Prize for this program. I hope we have because that'll mean we'll be able to ripple it out even uh, further and offer it because it's all free for everyone. This is all done as the gift economy, these programs. And so we introduce them to all kinds of leaders in all kinds of fields and uh, engage them in practical work too. So just a few extra things. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it yet, but I host a weekly podcast uh, interviewing people who have relationship to permaculture, either directly or indirectly, to really expand the field of what is permaculture education. Um, I host the, uh, the Our Permaculture Life YouTube channel. Uh, so there's hundreds of films in there that you can access anytime uh, on a whole range of different things. And you can also find recordings of our masterclasses in there too. Um, I have a blog too, that um, Our Permaculture Life, where you can find hundreds of um, different posts that include everything from recipes to podcasts and everything in between. Um, we have a new course page that's just gone live um, on Permaculture Education Institute, where you'll find all of our different uh, programs here um, and just so that you know too that the, the main program that we run here is this one it's the permaculture educators program because it weaves together 
the design course, the teacher's course. It includes um, the Hive community and all the other things that we've got going on. So um, if you're interested in that, please do get in touch. It's open anytime. People can start today, tomorrow, anytime, and you have access to that um, over a long period of time. And also if you're from um, the Global South or refugee community, um, we do fair share. And I don't have a limited number of places for people from these situations if they apply and they have the capacity to join in on the online programs and be um, be a participant, then they're very welcome to join. So if that's you, um, email me for an application form. So just again, if you want to find out more about all the programs, they're all linked to the Permaculture Education Institute.org site. Um, if you want to email me directly, you just stick a morag at, at the front of that and you'll you'll get me directly. Um, so I wanted, I did say that there was something that I had available for you. I also collaborate really closely with Pip Magazine, with David Holmgren's um, book publishing house and a lot of different things. So today I'd love to be able to offer you, if you're looking for something you'd like to get 10% off, um, there's 200 different permaculture related books available on this uh, permaculture book store run by per David Holmgren's uh, group. Um, so you just go to this site here and when you drop in the coupon code of just my name, you'll get 10% off everything. So if you're looking for some Christmas gifts still, that might be something that you'd like to do. To, um, and there's a whole range of different things from calendars to, um, you know, posters. And this was the art commission. So if you'd like to commission a piece of art, there's still time before Christmas to be able to get your photo across to get the artwork done. We have four artists who are working on this day in and day out at the moment. And they're um, the work that they're doing at the moment on, there's a couple of little children and there's a scene of a beach. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, so this is the link here. I suggest you, um, I will send you a follow-up email so, or you can take a picture of that. So basically the Education Institute product commission and original artwork from a refugee youth. That's the, um, the link. And yeah. I would love to see if anyone has any questions whatsoever about any or all of the above. I wonder if there's been any questions in the chat while I was um, speaking or if anyone here, I can see Ross is here, Ruth is here, Chrissy, Fleur, lots of people. Some people's names I don't recognise, but um, thank you for being here. Stacey, go ahead. Me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, there was a chat, a question earlier on the chat from Jackie, and she has asked, just one second, how does it work if my adult son wants to study with me? Um, I would recommend that you give me a call and maybe email me directly. I was when I send through the link to the um um, to the recording of this I will send out all the links that I've got and I'll also send a chance to kind of just book in a time to speak to me directly special questions like that I'd really like to just to do a one-on-one -on -one chat and see what we can work out um, and I was wondering if any of the current students might like to say something Go ahead, Lou. Hello, everyone. You saw my video. Um, yeah, I, it's totally what I said. Um, I really love every moment of the course. And like I said, I'm only up to, I'm now up to 16 or 17 weeks or something. And, um, yeah, every bit. I feel like I want to I get into it and I just spend heaps of time on it. But that's just me personally. Everyone does it at their own paces. So um, I'm enjoying it so much that I don't want to put it down some days. So, yeah, it's fantastic. So That's wonderful, Fleur. And, and Fleur recently also did a, a design studio sharing with us um, her rooftop garden and school program from when, when you were in, it was Vietnam, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just beautiful. Uh, really really great example. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Ros, you had your hand up just a minute ago. Did you want to jump in? Thanks, Fleur. 
Hi. Um, I'm loving what I'm doing. Absolutely loving it. Um, I get really emotional, actually, because it's it really touches my heart, all this wonderful stuff going on. So I won't talk long, but I think it's essential. Everyone should do it. Thanks, Roz. I'm so glad you're here. Go ahead. Is it Bukashan? Bukashane? Bukashane. Sorry for yes, messing that up. That's no, okay. It's Bukashan. Bukashane. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be part of this uh, presentation that I wanted to participate many times ago. Morang have been inviting me to attend the session. Unfortunately, the time of Australia have been confusing me. Uh, I'm Bugashane from Kakuma Refugee Camp. So I uh, really enjoyed seeing the sessions and the lessons that Morang have been facilitating. But I've just started around the office where I do work because so I'm designed there. Some permaculture designs around the office and uh, really is very brilliant. But I would like to have more, more skills on permaculture because I really like uh, uh, also being part of people who can be promoting the nature and the climate change. Uh, thank you so much. It's my right. pleasure to be part of this presentation. Thank you for thank you for speaking up. And I, I did just want to mention too that look out on every single event that I put out. I always have a little click here for your time or your local time. So if you click on that link, you'll then be able to go and find out what what time it is for your place. So just keep an eye out for that for for future reference. Um, because I and know that, it's that, <laughs> and that's that's that helped me today. Because most of the time I've been confusing the time of Australia and the yeah. American time. Because I, I, most of the time when it's morning, I think in Australia, no, in America, it has to be around, when it's evening in Australia, it has to, no, when it's morning in America, it has to be evening yeah. or still night then. But normally. Compared to Australia, it's different a bit. Yeah, most of our programs are at a good time for you. Um, so just look out for that link and you'll find out. Yeah. And I'll send you more information later on too. Yeah. Thank I'll you. Confirm it already. Thank Lillian, you go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm so happy. Every time I'm, I'm in this uh, kind of meetings, I just, I just imagine of what myself and my community have been in a position to to accomplish for the shortest period of time. It's all because of Morak and the former culture and the good people who came out to support us. Uh, being, being a woman in Africa and supporting these programs, it's like lighting a candle when there is a lot of darkness. And I'm so happy because we're in a position to produce enough food for ourselves. No, no words to express how I feel when I join these courses. And there is lots of materials. We didn't have the materials to teach. Imagine I'm teaching with all the materials from the hive and the dashboard. I'm so thankful to you, Morak, and to the community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lillian. And I wish you all the best with the course that you've got running on at the moment. It's so exciting. We have, well, I think it's, we're about, um, we're about to the top of the hour. I think I have I have a two minute video from Lillian. This is where she got um, when she got the seeds for her community. So if you indulge me, just um, I'll play that for you. Hang on a tick. Let me just share my screen again. Dear Mora, you can get this all from our faces. We are so happy. We received seeds for green grams, cow peas, pigeon peas, maize, what else? Sorghum, Sorghum millet, what else? Huh? Cow peas, cow peas, cow peas maize. Maize. maize, and we really appreciate you. May God bless you. May you never lack. Thank you so much.
You had requested me whether we can continue with the permaculture design course training and it's been a yes from the farmers. We were gathered here collecting seeds and we've decided that those who did not attend the previous one are going to start the training on 28th of this month. Well, Lillian, you organised all that. That is phenomenal. So hats off to you, and I am so honoured to be able to support you and to be able to be in the midst of this beautiful community that donates to support your project. So thank you to everyone who donated and thank you to you for organising it. I would like to wrap up now um, because it is after the hour. I am going to send you a follow-up email uh, with links of how to find out information about all the different things that I talked about today. And I welcome you to get in touch with me by email or to make an appointment to, to have a chat with me. Um, and that way, that's actually how we got together talking, wasn't it, Lillian? You just kind of booked in to have a chat and told me what you were doing and then things just kind of unfolded from there. So please reach out. I love to speak with people. I love to connect up and find out how we can really make far more permaculture education happening in the world. I think it's I think it's essential. I think it's something that's going to make a, such a positive difference. So thanks everyone for being here. And thank you everyone who's part of the program and Stacey for supporting um, this conversation as well. Take care, everyone. Nice to see you. Have a, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye.